Bang! Knees and eyes. I'm Jared. My lovely wife, Kara, is at work. And today we are going to do a knife talk about lock geometry. This knife right here is the Medford Smooth Criminal. I just recently did a review on it if you want to check it out. So, lock face geometry. What is lock face geometry? Okay. So, lock face geometry. This is what it is. So, we're looking at the lock right here. This is the Kaiser Rogue. So right here where this lock bar is, where it touches the tang of the blade. Now we're gonna draw that real quick. So let's say this is the lock bar. So this is basically, this is the part I'm moving right here. That's what I just drew right there. That, that. This is the Kershaw bare knuckle. But this part right here where I'm moving, that's that. Then the lock face, which is going to be right here. And then say this goes up to the blade. Okay, so this is the lock face. And that is this part right here. Okay, right where the lock is meeting the bottom right there. I'm going to show a lot more of it. So that is this part right here. So where this goes underneath that, we're going to draw another picture of it. So if this is the lock bar. Okay. Then this is where it locks up to. So when you flick your knife, you just seen that move over and underneath that right there now you see how i drew it at an angle now let me show you see when i open up the kaiser rogue you see how you got that angle right there and then when i close it that will spin around to right here it's a little bit of a mess let me wipe it really quick sorry guys um i need to clean this knife looks like i might need to take this knife apart and give it a little cleaning but you see right here I can get it. Let me get a different knife to really show it. Good. Okay. Here we go. This is the Spyderco Techno 2. Okay. See the lock goes right there. Go around. That's right where it's locking up. You see that little black dot right there? Get my pen. That's where the lock face is meeting up, is right there on the side. And I see how it's at an angle. That's the geometry of the lock face. So the lock bar meeting up there. Now there's different kinds of lock bars. So there's different geometries of lock faces. Just like there are liner locks, which are going to be thinner. And then there are also different thicknesses in blades. So that I messed up really bad. So, so, like, if you see a lock face and it's straight across like that, that's not going to be good geometry because this lock bar is going to be able to slowly travel over. You want the lock bar to have a place to rest and then for it to get tighter and tighter that way the tension of the lock bar that's constantly moving this direction is constantly getting tighter and tighter and tighter as it ages that's good lock face geometry now if this is too much of an angle when you get tension like if i open up the techno if you put tension on the back of the blade right here this will slip out this way, meaning it will slip out. So if I put tension right here, it'll slip out and that's lock slip. So if it has bad geometry, that's what'll happen. It will slip out. So good lock geometry 
will help it be nice and solid always and the the tension of the lock bar will always be going into a tighter and tighter spot so through time it doesn't get weaker it only gets stronger you know and that's saying that your lock bar has good tension still obviously if your lock bar starts getting weak that's another story but what we're talking about right now is just the dimension and the fitment and the angle of the lock bar let's look at a couple lock faces that are very early lock up now you see how that's almost all the way under it i like to see my lock bar completely under the tang this is the ace biblio i did mod it and i um took off the flipper tab but so i get better ergos but you see the lock bar under there. Now, this is very tight. When I first got it, it actually had lock slip because it was literally only locked up like that. So I could literally push past it. Now it's locking up right into place after time, after flicking it and flicking it and flicking it. It's worked its way into a nice tight spot. Now, like this one, I think had the same problem at first. And Andrew... Andrew Tool, who sent me this knife to check out, this is the Nova Blades Javelin. I just did a review on it. Um, I also did a video on taking the, the flipper tab off of this. But anyways, you see how this one's locking up into a nice tight spot. This thing's locked up solid because it's running into good geometry. And you can see as it works its way over into a tight spot... It's only getting tighter. Now, some lock bars, you can, you'll find that when you get them and they lock up, you put a little pressure on them, you can feel them just moving over really quick. Now, you don't want to do what I just did. You don't want to sit there and put pressure on your lock bar. But if you put just a little bit, you can feel whether or not it's tight or whether or not it... Uh, you know, it moves over very quickly, but I don't recommend doing that because I don't want you guys to hurt your blades or mess up your lock face or anything like that. Let it break in itself. But mine, this one kind of moves over if I put a little pressure, not too bad. I actually got to put pretty good pressure, but then it goes back and locks up good. So I don't have a problem doing that to this knife, but I've seen people create problems by doing that. But you, it's nice when you can find a lock face that locks up solid. And when you put a little pressure on it, it doesn't move. It just stays right there, you know, or maybe it does get a little tighter. Obviously, you can squeeze it to death. Don't do that. <laughs> I'm talking about just little minimal pressure. So let's take a look at a couple really quick. So we really get an understanding of a couple of these knives. I don't know if I'll get to them all, but like this Riat knife right here, okay? Let me zoom out a little bit. You see the lock bar. Now this one has a steel lock bar insert, which is going to make steel on steel. Let me show another one so you really get the picture of what that is. Okay, right here. So you see this is a titanium frame, and then on this lock bar is a steel insert see how the steel is so now it's steel on steel now it's not that big of a deal to have like a titanium one like this that has no steel insert as long as the lock bar is carbonized which makes the titanium harder in the just in the place of lock up like where the two spots meet up because titanium is softer than steel. Even though it's stronger pound for pound than steel and lighter, it's not as hard. So what you they do is they carbonize the lock face or the, the lock bar face and give it good geometry. You won't have stick. You won't have lock slip and it works just fine. Now, a lot of companies are going toward putting lock bar inserts in because it makes to where they don't have to carbonize the lock bar and also or the titanium and also it uh it can be a little easier because some companies have a little problem with the geometry where not saying it's not locking up or anything but they get lock stick some of them might get a little lock slip now 
little bit of lock sticks not that big of a deal usually it will break in and if you're getting really bad lock stick on a titanium frame lock knife like this you can put a little uh, permanent marker right here on the lock on where the, the the lock bar meets the tang of the blade the lock face you can put a little permanent marker there or you can take some pencil lead and you just mark it up right there so you either take marker or lead from a pencil and put it right there i'll clean that off in a minute um because this one's just fine but you can do that now the problem with it is that when you do that the lock stick will go away but your lock can slip so remember that if you uh do that and even though it locked up nice and solid before it can create lock slip if you do that with the marker or the lead now if you're not really worried about that because you don't put a lot of tension on the spine of your blade then it's not that big of a deal <clears throat> but you know just just remember that you know if you're trying to get rid of lock stick you can have that problem afterward but usually your blade will break in and this lock stick will eventually go away well the lock bar insert takes away that lock stick because now you just have steel on steel so it's not a softer material and a harder material the softer material and a harder material will create friction and stuff like that and even though the lockup might be stronger it might just create stick and then it creates more problems so this way there you don't ha they don't have to deal with that many issues now a lot of companies do it perfect so they never run into those issues like i've seen a lot of knives lately that just do it so perfectly um but a lot of production companies do put the steel lock bar insert and also a lot of um even uh um custom companies anyways so you see the angle of which that lock face is at now if you really look very closely you'll see right here along this part right here, just right on the edge right there of the surface, it's flat. Now what that does is that makes it to where now this has a spot to lock into and it'll stay there. Now if you look past there where it's going to go, where the lock bar is going to travel to, remember it's right here right now, it's gonna travel this way, it's an angle. So it has a nice tight spot to go into. And by the way, this is the Spyderco Brower. Very cool knife. Very, really good knife. Small blade, big handle. Good ergos. Um, but that's what you're looking for with good lock face geometry. Like, look at this one. Nice, thick titanium frame. Lock bar insert. So it does lock up on steel. And then right there, see that nice little flat spot? Now look where it's going. Look how tight that is right there. Now, when you really get lock slip and what you want to stay away from is this. Let's say this is your lock bar now. You have a lock or the lock up is like this. Now, I'm not saying that this can't work, but if you look at that, you're only hitting on this corner. So now look at this. There's a ramp. So what's going to happen if you put tension this way sorry about my arrow i'm trying to do this under a camera if you put pressure that way um or not i'm sorry i don't know why i said that if you put tension down this way sorry so what what's what will happen if you put tension down this way it's going to push this lock bar this way because it has a ramp so you want to be careful with lock face geometry that looks like that. I'm not saying it can't work, but you can have problems because when you put pressure down, it will slip that lock bar out. And that's when you get lock failure or lock slip. Now, let's look at a couple more. There's different kinds of locks though. Okay, that was just a frame lock. Now look at this one. This is an access lock. This is the Benchmade bug out. So when it goes around, you see the lock bar. I'm going to move it. You see it moving. Now, as the tang goes around, bang, it shoots up behind the lock face. So in return, this is built. It's pushing tension that way up behind the blade. So um, 
Sometimes these have a little wiggle this way, sometimes they don't, but it creates where you're not really gonna have lock slip because even if you put tension this way, it's not pushing down on the lock bar. It's actually just pushing the lock bar this way. So you have to break the lock bar or break, you know, the spine of the blade or spine of the handle. So there's um sometimes you'll get a little bit of lock stick on these, and sometimes it's just because you gotta clean the lock face. Right here is the lock face. So you see it going around and bang. Now, button locks. Let's look at this button lock right here. Now with a button lock, actually, you know what? I got a really big button lock here. Here's the Orion Solaris. Great, great button lock. So let's look at this one. This geometry is going to be a little different. It's right there, but you see how it's still like at an angle and everything? It kind of has a ramp going down this way. So this pin right here, has a it, it's all the way to this side so there's a let's see if you can see it see it moving right there it's on this side there's a spring on this side pushing a piece of steel that way and my blurriness keeps going away sorry about that or the blurriness keeps coming so when it locks in place you're going to see it right there you see me pushing the thing it's going to lock in place bam right there locked in place that's what holds it in place so it's the same thing just a different type of lock now there's lots of different locks even back locks let's look at a back lock back locks the same way this is a back strap and it angles right to there you can see it when i push down see it moving that's going to lock into it's Dirty, I need to clean it before I send it back. In that spot right there, see that little, that little hole right there? It's going to snap into place. So you want to make sure, mostly when I talk about lock face geometry, it mostly has to do with liner locks or frame locks. But all knives have lock face geometry. It's just what kind of lock are you dealing with? But liner locks and frame locks tend to be the one that you really have to worry about a little bit more with the geometry of the lock. And I say that only because, unlike an access lock that can't really slip, a compression lock like this, it can't really slip because it's a liner locking up in between the stop pin and the tang of the blade. So um, the li a liner or a frame lock has the ability to slip if you put tension on the spine of the blade. Let's look at this one. This one has great blade or lock geometry. I've had this for a long time. This liner has never moved. It's always been directly underneath. Now you see that angle? Let me pull it out a little bit. You see that angle right there? This is a knife my cousin Breeze just won. I got to uh, clean it up for him before I mail it to him on Wednesday. Um, he won that in one of our live shows. And maybe if you showed up to one of our lives, you might win something if we do a giveaway. Let's, um, let's look at another thing. So now here is, this is a knife I have to work on. I'm going to maybe do a video on it. So now watch this lock bar. See how far it went? Now watch this. Look how easy I just pushed that over. I pushed it the wrong way too. That makes, look at all that play. That's because it obviously needs work and stuff, but the lock face geometry <clears throat> isn't right right now. Obviously I need to do work on it, but it's just showing you what happens with poor lock face geometry. Right now it's loose, so that's why it has that problem, but that's the result in the lock face right now not being locked up tight not being locked up strong all those things now there's different depths of which a lock face can lock up let's look at this one now you see how this one sits right in the middle but look at the way they made it <clears throat> excuse me sometimes they'll give it like a little ramp 
but you see how it's nice and flat on the lock face. It's not just the corner of the lock bar that's locking up. So this one actually goes at an angle, but there's also, let me show you something. Look, oh, you know what, let me wipe it off. Look at the lock face. So you'll see, I might have to draw it on a piece of paper, but like sometimes what they'll do is you will get a, let's say, it's going at an angle. Oh, man. I'm drawing on top of knives right now. <laughs> let's say, This is the lock face, right? So this would be the opposite, you know, like that. So like what we're looking at right here would be like this part right here. Okay. So sometimes what they'll do is they'll put different depths. So like this corner right here will be higher or lower than this corner. So when the lock bar is moving over this way on the lock face, it's locking up stronger on the front than it is on the back just by a little bit. And that's just the geometry of the lock. And as long as they do it right, even if it's over in the middle, like this one is, that's okay. That makes a strong lock. Some people like that. Some people want to see their lock bar like me. I like seeing a lock bar right there perfectly. Uh, but this does not bother me as long as I know that there's a good angle coming. Which if you look, there is. You see that angle. There's. It's going to be a long time for this titanium liner to nestle its way in that spot. I would say almost never but it could do it over a long period of time, um, especially being titanium and it being a little softer, it might work its way over there. Now a steel lock bar insert, I don't know, might be a little slower. It all depends. But like here's a titanium liner and you see how it's perfectly right underneath that spot. But I think you guys get it. And if you look at the depths right here, you can see the different depths. Let's zoom in really quick to see the last thing I'll show you. Look at the different depths. You can see how this little corner is higher than right here. And how it kind of, uh, it has spots that are higher and lower to make it to where the, you can, and you can see the shiny part. That's right where the lock bar is right now. Now it's got to move its way into this tighter area in order to move over, which makes it lock up nice and strong. I hope I explain this well, because sometimes <laughs> I feel like I didn't. So let's just hope that I did. You can see it on this one too. See the shinier spot? That's right where the liner hits. This is the QSP Penguin. Can you see that angle? Nice tight spot. So depending on that angle and depending on where they give the area to lock up, depends on how strong it'll lock up, how long it'll take to move over, whether or not it'll have lock slip or lock stick. So you wanna look at those things. Every time I get a new knife, I always look at that because that's gonna tell me how long the knife will last, how hard use of a knife it'll be. Can I keep flicking it continuously? Like this one right here, I flicked this probably 200,000 times. The lock bar's never moved. Some people say that, oh, if you keep flicking your knife and keep flicking your knife, your lock bar will move all the way over. Well, maybe eventually, but if you have good lock face geometry, you can flick this forever and it's it's not going to move because it can't... Um, you, you have a better chance of that lock bar moving by you cutting stuff because you're putting pressure this way, which is putting tension on the blade going back this way. And the lock bar now is getting room to move over more than it just smacking in place. But 
I'm not saying that can't happen because I have seen knives that when they're repeatedly flicked and flicked and flicked and flicked, that they do start moving over. Now, a good lock face geometry should give an area for that lock bar to move and nestle right into place, right in a good spot and get tighter and tighter and tighter. It should not just be a flat spot so the lock bar just, you know, just moves over really fast. It should be like this, where it moves into a spot and then it just gets tighter and tighter and tighter as life goes on. I love you guys. Peace.